Peace to the family. Let's go in. Let's go in. Shalom. Shalom to you, fam. We're about to get it in. I'm always getting asked questions about polygyny. So we have a beautiful sister here that's going to connect. Hello. Peace to you, sis. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. You know, I'm excited to have the show. It's an honor to have you on. <gasps> really? It's an honor to have me? That's a fact. Thank you. I'm excited. I was like, oh, shit. I hope you don't try to play me. <laughs> Nah, not at all. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, How are you doing do... today since we have the 444 <laughs> portal happening today? Extremely busy. Extremely, extremely. And that's how it is, I think, almost every okay. single day since this year started, which is a good thing. So I'm not complaining, but I've been extremely busy. But I'm glad to have you on. Enough about me. Let's talk about you. Let these people know, our good brothers and sisters, where they can find you at ahead of time. Uh, tell them how to find your name, then also put your name in, in the chat before we get to business. I just want them to know what it is that you do exactly okay. and where they can find you. And then we'll get okay. to work. All right. Hold on. I need to know how to pin stuff down. So give me just a second. <laughs> um... So while she's doing that, I'm going to build with y'all. So today we're going to have a conversation about polygyny. And I'm at her disposal for her to ask whatever questions she deems. She's into polygyny. She confides in that relationship paradigm. And what she's going to do is probe my mind from my perspective or my family perspective as a collective, our family perspective as a collective. And we'll get it in. We'll also, we'll also take questions from the chat room. But she's going to be driving the ship. She's going to be giving her import. And I think it's going to turn out amazing, you know? But right now, I want her to be able to tell everybody what she does exactly. We'll we'll get your name and everything up in there. Okay, because I'm struggling. <laughs> it's all um, good. So I am, I go by Solaris, the High Priestess. I offer um, tarot and astrology sessions. Um, I'm located in Austin, Texas, but I do readings online and just for people all over the world. Um, I also have a podcast talk, talk, called Tarot Talk Live, and um, I just recently did an episode about polygamy, and I feel like I manifested this interview because I wrote your name down, and I wrote the questions, and I was like, I'm just going to like ask him and see if he responds. So I was like super excited because I wrote it two days before I even messaged you. So I feel powerful. And yeah. <laughs> definitely are. You definitely are. So let's, let's get it in. Let's get it in. I'll shoot away. I'm, again, I'm at your disposal. Uh, I okay. want to be as consistent as I can lie, but I also like shedding light on what the brothers and sisters that are out there on Instagram or doing so when I see the radiant light, when I see the positive vibes and the energy, I always want to share the platform or share the page, share the stage, so that way uh, we can exist as a network of people. So those of y'all that's into the higher energies and the metaphysics, uh, stay in tune because there's, this is like a grocery store when it comes to consciousness, right? And when you go to the grocery store, there's several different, products from several different companies within the confines of that one grocery store. So sometimes we kind of become complacent and we only want to shop with one company in particular, and that's okay. But let's go to the grocery store and let's see the plethora of products or things that are made available to us. And let's give it and, and let's give it some thought and see what's going on. So anyway, I'm, I'm highly interested in what you do. I see it manifest and your spirit and your energy and your attitude. So that's why I, I buy into it. And I'm with it. You got my support. And Thank let's you. kick it. 
let's get it in. Okay, awesome. So, um, I my view on polygamy or polygyny is I'm for it. Um, on my last podcast, I had two other women that I was asking um, how they felt about it. And my understanding is when I bring um, any type of poly relationship up, a lot of women are definitely turned off by it and they only hear negative aspects about it. So my first question to you is what is the definition of polygamy and what's the difference between polygamy and polygyny? That's a very good question. I'm glad you did that. The polygamy is a general interpretation of several people outside of a monogamous relationship working as a collective in a relationship. It's general. So it could be inclusive of any of a number of different types of arrangements consisting of men and women. Polygyny, more especially and specifically, entails a relationship where there are several women to one man. That is okay. polygyny. You know, you also have polyamory uh, and, or, and and different uh, arrangements, you know, where there's several men to one woman, or you have the the arrangement where there are just multiple men and multiple women all engaged. So polygamy, normally people conceive it to be exclusive to a man with multiple women, but polygamy encompasses all those different types of arrangements. But polygyny is when you're talking about one male to several women. Right. So that's polygyny. Okay. So I feel like that's uh, ignorance on my behalf because I was kind of just putting polygamy under, um, you know, basically everything. And I feel like I, I think I got some feedback about that because I was thinking that polygamy was when it was just the man who has uh, multiple women. Well, you're not, you're not wrong. It's just not okay, limited well, yeah, to that. So both ways You're not wrong. okay okay so what made you consider living this type of lifestyle well, well i'll tell you this uh as as a male and the type of person that i am uh, i want to make it clear that my first wife uh, i'm anetta I, I love her dearly she's and it's beautiful. not a matter oh thank you so much mm -hmm. and it's not a matter of if she's not enough for me that you know people say that they like to speak on my behalf instead mm -hmm. of actually ask me you know, how right. I feel, you know, and I understand that we were raised a certain way. So when you raise a certain way, most people's only reference for polygyny is pimping because that's as close as they ever seen it in this European culture. OK, right. so it's the only thing they can connect with. And if it is not that, it's like we're we're more, what seems more befitting for people's minds is to accept a woman with multiple baby daddies. I'm not castigating or condemning anybody. But it seems more socially acceptable if a man has multiple children from several women he's no longer in a relationship with, or if a woman has several babies by several fathers, that seems more respectable than being in a consistent relationship with several women with less children involved and pacing yourself. Okay, but I just wanted to throw that out there. But ultimately, when, when you look at it, I got involved with the scenario because it had a socioeconomical clause in addition to the fact that as a male, you know, I love the attention and the company, the affection, mm -hmm. love, the support, and the energy of women. And, and the way I was taught from my master teachers, the way I was taught is that the women make you successful. If you know how to take that energy and convert it because they're internal beings and we're external beings. So you have sex as the activator, right? Mm -hmm. Or the woman is the activator and the man is the motivator or vice versa. Actually, the man is the activator and the woman's the motivator. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the energy, her as an internal being, when you give her your ideas, she can conceive it. She helps nurture it. OK, okay that's the teaching and support of you. And if you mm -hmm. multiply that type of support, I'm talking on a metaphysical level. I will also go on a social economical level I'll, I'll go different levels with everybody so it's not just oh he's spitting that metaphysical game because i know how a lot of people are once you start talking to metaphysics they become uh, reluctant to hear they become apprehensive so i yeah. get it but since this is a question directed to me i'm going to give you my answers from my philosophy from my disposition so women make men successful especially mm -hmm. the likes of whom are very supportive you know if the women in my world wanted me 
to be a reader, wanted me to be a writer, wanted me to be a teacher. Henceforth, I am. Okay, when I was commissioned to be that, when I took on that commission from my wife, I became what she conceived. In yeah. fact, if I wanted to be a gangbanger, when I was a gangbanger, it was because the women whose company I was in, who I was doing everything for as far as attention is concerned and appealing to, I was made in the image and after the likeness of the women whose company I kept. So when I changed the criteria of the type of women I would be around and the women that I were around, that I was around, changed their criteria for the type of man that they wanted in their presence, the combination created the world that I live in now. Wow. <laughs> you feel me? So, and the way I was taught, in short, I'm about to go to the socio-economical aspect, but the way that I was taught, in short, is that the women make the men great, okay? Mm -hmm. And the women give the man his pride. The women, the woman will make you go outside and take on 15 cats, because one of them called her the B word, <laughs> just on a strength. You know, the men wear the jewelry because they want to be seen by women. They buy the nice cars because they want to be seen by women. I ain't never buy anything just for the benefit of being seen by one of my brothers. In right. fact, most of everything that I've ever done that's materialistic has been to gain the appeal of the beautiful black woman. Right. And so still on to this very day. It's just that the women that I associate with, the way it's easy to appeal to them is more on a sapiosexual level. So instead of uh, looking to appeal to the women that I'm with, with nice cars and, and, and money stacks, is more of, yo, they love when I read and they love when I teach. So that kind of encouragement, that kind of zeal and that kind of enthusiasm that I get from the women that I'm around, who mm -hmm. I want to appeal to, they encourage my behavior. And I'm not afraid to say that because a man is going to be what the women want him to be. I don't care how alpha male you can tend to be. You could be as alpha male as you want on planet Earth. <laughs> okay, but you got it all twisted if you're not doing what you're doing to be in the image and after the likeness successfully of the women whose attention that you want to earn. And yeah. so that's the world that I'm living in. Now, as far as socioeconomics is concerned, once we establish, okay, I'm a male and I want to be with multiple females because that's how I'm designed. I don't want to live a life where I got to hide. I don't want to live a life where I got to lie to someone and break their heart. I don't want to, I want to talk to a woman and be like, hey, it's just you and I, and this is how we're going to live. All the while, it becomes culture for us to say that to a woman and then go out there and sneak when we could just kept exactly. it real because it's billions of people on the planet. So there got to be people that's compatible with me. There's idiots on the planet that, ha that find compatibility, okay? There's people that like rough sex and like to be beat up and, and handcuffed. You know, I'm not with all that. But you know what? There's people on the planet that's with that. And they, mm -hmm. want, they can find compatibility. There's billions of people on the planet. So why would we force compatibility with people who don't share similar interests? So when right. people say, hey, you know, uh, that's just for you. That's, you know, you want to have your cake and eat it too. I say, my nigga, if it's my cake, why can't I eat it too? I don't never understand these kind of weird things people talk about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How you going to tell me I want to have my cake and eat it too? Should I go around eating other people's cake? That don't make no damn sense. I'm going to eat my cake. That's a fact. So in my, no world, point. <laughs> in my world, I want to be around multiple women. In my approach towards being creative, mm -hmm. that's what empowers me. Some people are empowered by different things. Me being surrounded by women. I don't have to have sex with every woman. Just me getting right. the attention of a woman. Like, right now, I got your attention. That motivates me. That pumps me up. That makes me like, you know what? How did I get to this point where I got this beautiful woman's attention? Through being smart. So you know what I'm going to do after this? I'm going to continue to be smart. <laughs> so I can continue to get that drive, that motivation, that esteem, so I can be greater at what I do, just so. The, I could be the benefactor of a smile or appreciation. Now, that's the first thing. First thing is this. I want to be with multiple women, and that's being honest. So the next right. thing is, who are the women that don't mind, and what is their criteria for sharing a man, provided they're willing to? Okay, right. so if I meet the criteria, if they say, man, you have the attributes of the type of male that I wouldn't mind sharing under such pretense, that's out the door. That's out the window. Because people say, oh, if it's about making money, then you could do that with this one or that one. I said, no, 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 slow down. First of all, it's a man saying I want to be with multiple women. That's where I feel most comfortable. 
That's one. After we establish that, then the next conversation is how can we make this effective? So how I make it effective is through a social economical means, a methodology that we employ, understanding that, yo, we can pull our funds and then when we as a collective see above surface, see above the water, then we can collectively work towards each individual. And which me, in that particular case, I'm the servant. So I wouldn't be the first one that comes up. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We work as a family. We come up as a family. And then, then we have to service each one of the women first. And that's right. what the man has to do in humility. So I teach love is law, family is business. That's what I teach. Love is law, family is business. And a corporation is cooperation. And that's how we do, that's how we do things on, on this end. So I know, you, I know I gave you a mouthful. I just no, wanted no, to make no, sure things up. clear because I got to let people know. First thing is, I said I want to be with multiple women. Not, right. yo, I want to make money because people always get it twisted. Oh, you can make money and you don't need to be in a relationship to make money. Don't get it twisted. I said I want to be with multiple women. That's where I'm comfortable at. I feel comfortable. I don't want to cheat. I don't want to lie. I don't want to be a child because a man lies. And if, and if a woman, if you put yourself before the presence of a woman, and you get caught lying. You're no longer a man. You're a fucking child. You feel what I'm saying? So I can't be put in a position to be a child before a woman whose attention that I'm looking to earn, whose appreciation I, I'm in need of. I can't be over here belittling myself because I can't come to terms as a man. I can, I can do all this exercise. I can do pull-ups. I can do over 500 push-ups straight. You know, I'm ready to gangbang. I'm ready to shoot somebody They disrespect me. But then to my own woman, I got to come there and lose my nuts. Pardon me, sister. And, and now I got to talk to you like I'm some damn child. And now, and now you can hold it over my head every time. Now, you know, right. now, you know, I'm a liar. Now, now the whole relationship is over. I don't care. If we stay three years together, five years together or 10. Got it's it. that one lie that you caught me in. That's always going to have you in a space where it's like I'm inferior. Instead of you being my partner and we're being partners, you got to look at me and say, yo, this motherfucker lies. What else he ain't going to lie about? What sets him apart from everybody else? If he starts to lie. So everything right. he values. So like respect. I give everybody 100% respect when I see them. And you have to devalue that. So if I give you 100, you have to work your way to 95. You have to work your way to 88. Because everybody's going to get that respect from day one from me. And that's how it is in the relationship. Everybody should be do that. But unfortunately, we come in with baggage. We have preconceived notions because we've seen that before. So what would be different? What would be different? is exactly what polygyny has done for me. Polygyny has made me extremely honest. So honest. It made me honest about things that as a man, in man culture, it is culture to lie. It is culture to cheat. It is culture to be places that yeah. you're not supposed to be and then tell your wife that you're really not there. It is culture for her to know that you're lying. You feel what I'm saying? But she still goes along with it. But everybody knows there's a lie going on. We're just waiting for the motherfucker to get caught. You know what I'm saying? And then, then it comes to terms. Everyone comes to terms, and then it's the crying, it's the screaming. We might make it work out again. But the fact of the matter is it becomes culture of men to lie about their whereabouts, lie about their feelings, lie about who they think is beautiful. And if I got to live a lie for several years in order to be in love, then I'd rather live in hate. I heard that. Listen, I got a house full of women right now. Did you hear that? He said it's culture for a man to lie. It's culture. But that's the fact. Like, it's culture I mean, for a man to lie. And I, I, I know men going to get upset, but I'm, I'm not about to. I, I, could, I could go. I could call every man I know, and we could get ready to embark upon a lie right now. And it, it would be, it'd be culture. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm not knocking people. I'm just saying, like, really, if I wanted to leave, if I wanted to leave and say, yo, fam, um, yo, roll with me elsewhere or come with me to the strip club or something. I know your wife home. Mm -hmm. Let's let's bust a move. His wife may not want to uh, support that. But when he gets out, he's going to release what he really feels like. And so what I tell my good brothers is, man, just come to terms, be honest, or get up out of there. But they be in love, too. But what, and a lot of times what happens is they, they see what's going on in my world. Their wife definitely is already anticipating yeah, you, yeah, you're going to come one day with this bullshit and I'm going to check you. Don't even bring it up. But the reality is that I don't want to be in a relationship with anybody that's going to force me to be other than myself comfortably. Right. 
okay? And and for people that's out there, if he really loves her, then why don't he just stick with one wife? Well, I say this. If you really love your child, why you make a second one? You feel what I'm saying? So this is this is BS what people do. And I'm not referring to the women as children. I'm saying if, if it's not impossible to love more than one of your children, if, mm -hmm. it, if it's not impossible when people say, man, I know you love one of your children more than the other. And you say, oh, no, I love both my children. So how the hell it can be possible for a person to love two different women, three different women, or in my particular case, four different women at the same time? I love mm -hmm. them for different reasons. They all got different attributes. They're all unique in their own capacity. I don't have nobody competing amongst each other. That's ridiculous because mm -hmm. nobody's a child. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I can't have somebody make me feel so uncomfortable with who I am because eventually I'm going to end up resenting them. So if it's in my heart to be with multiple women, I'm going to wind up looking at the woman I'm with in disdain if I don't get a chance to live Ooh. that life that I want to live. So I know right. I don't want to lie to nobody because it's too much people on the planet that would accept me as is for me to drag you in hell and lie to you day to day. You better say that, drag you in hell. See, so with my episode, I put polygamy and astrology. So you are a Leo, right? Yeah, August 10th. So, right. Do you know your, your moon and your rising sign? or Are you into that or no? Uh, my rising sign, Gemini. So see, it makes sense. I feel like I've been looking at the way that any poly relationship can work is through astrology. And I feel like with you being a man that is a Leo, of course, you like to show off. And it would make sense that you would want to have multiple women because Leos like to take care of shit and they're able to bring in a lot of money. And I feel like they can separate their emotions and they can disperse themselves equally through other people. Um, and then you being a Gemini, like you want a variety of anything anyways. So I want to know... <laughs> Um, with your wives, you have four. Could you tell me all of their signs, their sun signs? Do you know? Uh, Taurus, uh, Scorpio, Ooh. Cancer, and Gemini. Taurus. Oh, the how is the Scorpio? Uh, that's how that she's amazing. She's she's expensive, but she's amazing. <laughs> I bet. One of the the women that was on my um very sensual, very sensual. Okay, yeah. So one of the women that was on the podcast, uh, there were one was a Leo and the other was a Scorpio, and I felt like with water signs, I feel like it's kind of harder for them to be in a polygamous relationship because they feel so deeply and they're very emotional. But I do feel like Scorpio is one of those water signs who can understand. Um, but her take was like, I can just do it for the business aspect and us being able to make money together, but I couldn't be like intimate with that person. But with your, your first wife, y'all been together for 15 years, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, right now, 20, 22 years now. Damn. Since 12, so when 13 you, years old. When you first got with her, did you tell her that that's what you wanted, or it, was it something that just kind of grew into that? Well, no, nah, I didn't tell her that, but I was always around a lot of women. I never mm -hmm. really hung out with men. I could put on a hand how much male friends I've had up until – I'm 36 right now – up until probably around the age 31 or 2. Mm -hmm. I probably was able to put on a hand how much male friends I had straight into age 32. You know, it wasn't until I really started organizing and having my security team and stuff like that. I mean, I played basketball with people. I grew up boxing, but I never had a, like, consistent relationship with a with a male on a, that's my best friend and we doing this and the third, other than one or two guys, you yeah. know. And, and when we outgrew each other and went on different paths, it was just only women after that. So I've always been around women. I was able to come to terms with me being polygynous when I got older, you know. And I, again, I wanted to be truthful about myself, but it wasn't too far-fetched because I, I always, always, always was around a lot of women when I was, mm. when I was young, uh, young ladies when I was a young man and so forth and so on. So it was kind of react. Nothing negative. I mean, like I said, uh, we we've been the way we've been for quite some. You need a key. We've been the way we've been for quite some time. So the understanding is there, and I always was extremely respectful to her. She she unfortunately had to make me a man 
my my first wife because I was acting like a little boy when I should have been behaving more like a young man. And so she she was more mature than me, even though she was ghetto and I was ghetto, but I was ultra ghetto, <laughs> right? And um, but she she always <laughs> wanted to be. Yeah, I was ultra ghetto. But one thing about her and I, we always wanted a family. We always wanted to have a family. We both was missing things. And we, we said when we do decide to have a child, it was going to be planned. And we was going to execute as parents in ways that our parents came up short with no offense to them. And so we evolved together, we grew together, and we learned more about ourselves in the interim of us getting conscious and reading this book and going to this lecture and listening to that class. And after a while, it just worked out. But when you grow with somebody and people really love each other, you accept each other for who and what you become. And even if that means you have to separate, there'll be a level, there, there has to be respected if it was really love in the first place. So, you know, sometimes people say, well, what if she wanted a man? And then I would have want myself. I wouldn't be comfortable like that because I'm I'm a sigma male. That's one above the alpha male, but it's inclusive of, right? So it wouldn't work because my energy, how I am, that, that's just a fact. And but guess what? The love I have for, I will always be there for for the rest of my life. That's a fact because it's just real. And then who I am, you know, people don't realize I change a lot of ways because she's worth it. I change a lot of things about myself. Because I, I take it that serious. So because I love I'm in that I, I have to change. You know, that's yeah. just how that works. But then there's things that I am that is like, yo, hold on. That change would make me uncomfortable. That change would make me volatile and it would it would ruin our chemistry. So when we're in a relationship, we gotta come to terms with what we're willing to do for the sake of the other party that doesn't bring us certain compromise versus yeah. that which we do and it would bring compromise and it now feels more like an imposition as opposed to a favor or a compromise. So you got, you got to find that. And that's, that's based on or predicated upon the chemistry of those two people, not spectators to say, Oh, then that means you really No, It depends on what a person's temperature is. Uh, figuratively speaking, we check the temperature. Something might be too hot or too cold, but yeah. what's too hot or too cold for me is not too hot or too cold for somebody else. So we check the temperature of our own relationship. And if it still makes sense after the fact, we go for it. So for us, it made sense after the fact. It wasn't something that can overwhelm her. Okay. And whatever would have overwhelmed me wasn't even on the table. You feel what I'm saying? So it, it's something that worked out. So that's what chemistry is about. You could take two highly poisonous gases like hydrogen is poisonous, flammable. You could take oxygen. It's very poisonous, right? But mm -hmm. if you put them in the right combination, H2O, it creates a molecule that sustains life. Two poisonous gases come together and create a molecule that sustains life. So in one instance, they're destructive, but together, they're sustenance. So that's how people are. Some people together would become the explosion, but yeah. they'll be the sustenance as an individual. And some other people would be explosive by themselves, but in a unit or in a covalent bond, it'd be like, man, this is sustaining. And so that's how we got to look at it. Right? That's how we, I look at it. So when y'all first started, like how did the first experience of bringing another woman in go? Like was she the person who picked the woman or was yeah, it you that's, or that's, what? that's how the vibes are. That's how it works. Uh, all my wives picked up the wife that came after. Really? Yeah, that's how it works. They pick what if the they're not your type? Like, what if she picks somebody? It's not going to go down. I got to have a say. That's not going to go down. You're not going. You're just not going to pick the most uh, unappealing person to me because I, you know, I I need I need a woman that got shape. Um, I want her to be brilliant, but I also mm -hmm. need her to have shape. That's my personal convictions. Okay. It can be shallow to other people. It ain't shallow to me because again, I don't want somebody that I'm a lie to. I don't want no one that I'm a, that I'm not really comfortable with. I don't want to live that world. So I want to be exactly with somebody that I want to be with. So that way I'm locked in. That way I keep my commitment. I don't cheat. I don't lie. I don't want to sneak behind you because people don't realize you could cheat in polygyny. If you break your commitment to the people that you have a relationship with, that's cheating. You feel me? So I don't go around I here. I know that. I, yeah, I could be on wife number 35 or 50 or whatever by now. But that's not the way. That's not the time I'd be on. I'd be working so much. 
I don't even get an opportunity to even really be able to engage other sisters like that. You know, I do be around a lot of sisters. I know people see me doing my posts, but those are my, my homegirls, my advocacy, my well wishes, you know, maybe someone's being courted or whatever, but the vibes, it, it's just a process. It's not nothing that like, I'm gonna meet somebody today and three days later, I'm bringing her in the house because what you don't want to do, especially when you got children, is lose everybody and bastardize your children because of some luster. Right. You feel what I'm saying? If it's really well, if it's really real, you take some time to develop a serious relationship and everybody get a chance to connect and bond with each other. And, and it has to be unanimous vote because it's a family thing. And you can't be walking around dragging your feet or upset because somebody's upset. You can't be dragging your feet because, oh, man, you messing everything up, man. We, we need to put this together. Now, nah, the chemistry ain't right. The chemistry ain't right. It's all good. Don't nobody need that type of stress to be waking up in no house feeling the vibe of somebody else not feeling you. That's not fair to nobody in that situation, especially when children start being involved. Because what are they going to learn from that experience? That's toxic. And your home is supposed to be your place of refuge. We don't need no toxicity. We don't need people waking up upset about the situation. And nine times out of ten, when that is the case, from my perspective, it's normally something the man's doing wrong. Because right. we shouldn't even be in that space. Nobody should be walking around feeling the way about another person living in the same house. And that's another thing. When you first start in my world, you get everybody to live in the same house because it makes you more truthful. It makes you more honest. Everybody lives in the same house and we do this shit together. We build from scratch if we say it is what it is. And when we develop as a family, a corporation, a corporation, a cooperation, once mm -hmm. we really develop as a cooperation, eventually we can venture off, have our own endeavors, have our own homes. Because like right now, all, all my wives, they have their own businesses, have their own homes, they have their own thing. They good. And the reason why you want to set it up like that in polygyny is I have a peace of mind knowing that any woman that I'm with, any of the four women I'm with, any of the four wives I have, I have a peace of mind knowing that I've contributed to a great deal of their success. The family as a whole has contributed to a great deal of their success, and they individually have contributed to a great deal of their success, so much so that they don't need the relationship. They, they are not economic slaves. If any day out the week that they want to leave, they have the power to do so. So the way I was taught, okay, and the way that I, I become more refined, of course, so I added and complemented things from my teachings, inserted my own personality, what I understand to be effective polygyny, what I understand to be effective in order to have the four wives that I have, each woman has to be in a position where she can leave because she is financially straight. Therefore, when she stays, you know for sure that she chooses to stay by her own free will and accord. So it ain't officially polygyny until everybody's eating. It's not officially polygyny until everyone's successful. So my goal as a male for it to really begin is when the woman has everything she needs to leave you and chooses to stay. That's how that works. I like that because I feel like a lot of men who think about wanting to start polygyny, they're just thinking about, or polygamy or whatever, they just want to have multiple women to be able to brag and they look at it as a sexual thing but it's like you have to be able to manage all of these people so i feel like the average person He's can't done. just come in and be trying to have a whole bunch of women you know what i'm saying like you have to have your shit together in that aspect um how do you manage if there is confrontation between the women like is that does that ever happen and is that hard to deal with it's not hard to deal with i got you king it's not hard to deal with uh but that's what we have a family meeting for you know i don't i don't sit there like it's a totalitarian situation you know we would have a tribunal de depending on how many parties is involved or what, what it suffice but the first thing is clean that up amongst y'all if it's possible if it's not, it's a family meeting. And even the children are involved. Because the children need to understand. And because we got to, there's no yelling and screaming in the house and there's no using of vulgarity. This is an absolute fact. Okay. You know, you cannot use vulgarity and be angry at the same time. We shouldn't be using vulgarity in general. But if it is, it should be a slip of the tongue because we're happy and we, we just build in, in, in on, our, on our nigga vibe, right? But <laughs> it got to be a nigga vibe because we shouldn't be using vulgarity in the house. <laughs> uh, because we have to have a place on planet Earth, that when everybody else is losing their mind, when everybody mm -hmm. else is making you upset, 
when everybody else is making you feel sick, whether it's your coworkers because you work some for somebody else, which really wouldn't be the case in, in polygyny, because the game plan is to make sure that everybody's self-sustaining, they're industrialists, and if not that, at least an entrepreneur. But anyway, the goal is, hey, we have to have a place on planet Earth that we can seek refuge if there's no other space that we can go to, and that would be our home. So right. once the home is no longer a safe place, then that means you start saying, I don't feel like going there. Because if we leave with drama in the house, we can live our day and enjoy ourselves. But when it's time to come back to the house, the drama that you left with in the morning invites itself back to your conscious the second you start holding that doorknob mm -hmm. and you got to walk back in. And now you don't feel like being home. And so when you don't feel like being home, where else are you going to go? Wherever you're going to go is problematic and inconsistent with your original ambition. Because your ambition was to be part of a family, a corporation, a cooperation. Okay? Yeah. And so you can't, you cannot defile or, or desecrate the abode in which you reside. You can't. That's the mandatory law. So, yes, we can have a disagreement. But if it's going to get so volatile that we have to raise our voice or we have to use vulgarity, you have to step outside and do that. Because that subconsciously creates a force field around your home. Because yeah. what we don't want is the children and we don't want the women and we don't want the men feeling like not coming home because that happens too much in the black community. So we have to have rules and create borders and parameters to, to protect or maintain the integrity of the household as far as energy is concerned. So that's yes. one. Two, you can have family meetings and even invite the children so they can see how we delegate responsibilities, how they can see how we deal with conflict resolution, we don't want to hide that because then where are they going to learn it from? If we play like, yo, don't do it in front of them, which I get, don't have them, don't have no real drama or certain inappropriate conversations in front of the children, totally understood. But if it's evident that there is an issue or there's some kind of contention, family meeting time. So we've, we've done it. You know, I'm not going to say we've outgrown it, but we haven't really been there in a space where we needed those type of meetings. Now I mean, it's be like, okay, um, oh, are we going to buy the house, in, our second house in Miami? Or are we going to stay uh, in Beverly Hills? You know, conversations like that. Right. Family meetings. But nonetheless, we're not above or beyond reproach. No one is above or beyond reproach. If a family meeting needs to be called, you know, early on, it used to be, yo, her vibe is like, Yo, what the hell are you mad about? It's, it's making me uncomfortable, right? Oh, you feel that too? All right, yo, we need to have a meeting. Then they in the hot seat, and then we got to all talk like, yo, what's up with the vibe? What's up with the energy? You can't be in your feelings. And everybody's there. There's children there, everybody watching. But guess what? Sometimes there's a meeting, and it's on me. And I'm like, okay, I heard we was having a family meeting, but I ain't know I'm on the hot seat. What the hell am I doing here? They're like, yo, polite, you got to calm down. I'm like, yo, what the? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, That's what funny. I'm trying to figure out. It's it's funny when we talk about it later, but at that moment, you almost feel like, oh, worse, so y'all just been talking about me. <laughs> you know, it's like, nah, it got to that point, so we wanted to have a meeting. And it's funny later on, like right now, we, ha we can have all sorts of stories about uh, family meetings because everyone's been on that seat several times in our development, and, and you don't want to be there. But the, the healing is there. People cry. I've cried. We hug. You know, when we get to build, you find out a lot about each other, then everybody's empathetic with each other because we realize that nobody had an intention to hurt anyone. But if we don't create outlets for people to be able to communicate with each other, you take offense. But when you get to build with people, you no longer take offense. You realize that that person was hurting about something and they needed to reach out. But unfortunately, we haven't been able to develop that part of our character to, to allow ourselves to be vulnerable and yeah. open enough to tell people how we feel about feeling like they'll take advantage of us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we put on this, this, this false cloak or veil of, of being a stone wall and unbroken. But those lower emotions is a sign of being broken from whatever the case is going on. And it could have its inception in our early adolescence, but we carry the baggage into the relationship. And until someone actually gets you to come to terms with those feelings, you end up indirectly hurting people and misappropriating your energy. So those family meetings, th those, that's therapy. It's one of the best things that's ever happened in my life that's because beautiful. I never experienced family meetings. I love Goodbye. that. That's beautiful. It's a good vibe. I feel Real like good. 
something that I always say, especially when I'm doing readings, because, you know, a lot of people come to me for love readings and I'm like, this is about experience and not possession. I feel like you kind of miss out on the bond and like the spiritual experience when you're trying to possess and control somebody else versus experiencing and learning. So I know that in these type of relationships, the ego has to go completely because just as women, we carry a lot of trauma from being in relationships with men who aren't honest about who they are in the first place. And then, you know, let's say that we get into a situation like this and it triggers something and it's like, I feel like this person has something that I don't have. And then it naturally makes a woman want to go into comparing themselves to the other person. Um, so I have a, a more personal question and you don't have to answer it if you don't want to, but this I, is I'm with you, sis. Okay. The main thing that I hear from other women is like, do, does everybody has to have to participate sexually like together or is it like a separate thing? That would be insane. If we told someone they have to participate, you know, in a group activity. You know you what know? I mean. Like, no, no, I'm not, you I'm wouldn't say it like that. I'm, I'm speaking to everyone. It's not you. You're just asking the question. You're the vessel to speak on behalf of the people. So trust right. me, I don't feel no offense for nothing. And you can ask whatever you want to ask. What, what I'm saying is, and just putting it into context, as far as how, how it goes down in my world, mm -hmm. no one has the right to tell someone, that you have to participate if you're going to be in this relationship in sexual affairs. That's right. that to me. That to me is not only totalitarianistic, but it's also uh, it sounds borderline like rape. But that's my opinion. I, other people can have what they want to say. <laughs> it just sounds kind of spook. It got me spooked out just thinking about it. But what I would say is, uh, in, in our world, we don't we don't rock with the the lesbian homosexuality vibe. Well, obviously, ain't all the male there, but the lesbian is vibe. However, you know, we could connect and be intimate uh, more than two of us or, or, or two wives or three or, or even four, provided everybody's with it. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? So it just all depends on people's energy, you know, because a sister may be like, uh, you know, I ain't with it today. And I know some people say, well, how is it not lesbianism involved if more than one wife can be involved? Well, it, it doesn't cross that line of lesbianism that we see as lesbianism. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And so that, that might be other people. Other people might be like, yo, if you see another woman naked, then, and if y'all are in the same room, that's it. But in my opinion, that's not it. And, and everybody else's opinion that I'm rocking with, that's not it. You know, we have a pretty... A solid agreement on what we think lesbianism is <laughs> so that doesn't really take place at all and let me not Wait, say can you explain that to me a little bit deeper like so basically the women don't have to do they anything not have to no each other it's all about yeah they're not having no relationships with each other i'm not leaving the house to do my work and wondering as i see two women in bed like yo what the <laughs> <laughs> i'm not... done <laughs> is that the rules in general, or is that just like the way that you set it up? Uh, it's a it's a common understanding. It's a common. Okay. Understanding. I'm not interested in it. I can tell you that. I'm not interested in none of that. You know, I mean, I, as much as I love being around women and multiple women at a time, uh, I don't really want to be watching y'all two, you know, beat it up. And I'm I'm hey, you know, <laughs> don't forget about me. <laughs> Oh, nah. I'm done. All right. And, and, and the answer? sisters is not on that vibe. The sisters that I'm with, they they not on that vibe. They they celebrate their sexuality. They're not insecure in the presence of another woman. All of that. But like I said, it's just there's a plateau that in our world we like. That's not what we dealing with. But it doesn't mean that everybody can't be in a vibe together and connect. You know, it's just a criteria. You know, it's a criteria. So for some people, they may be saying that crosses the line. For us, we we may be like, no, nah, that don't cross the line. That crosses the line. We ain't into that part. You feel me? Yeah. So how do you disperse your energy, like, equally through each woman? Like, do you make it to where they have, like, a different day of the week where you can spend certain I time or I what? don't believe in that either. You know, okay. I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. You, you, have, you have some questions loaded. Come on, I'm a Virgo <laughs> with a Gemini moon, okay? Knowledge. I'm ready. You loaded questions, with your I'm questions. Ready. Those are good questions. These are very good questions. I'm glad I did the interview because I wouldn't even have thought to say some of these things. So let me see. Let me see. Let me see. The days of the week and all of that 
it's too mechanical. It's too technical. I'm too busy for that kind of stuff. For me personally, I don't got no time to be. I, I don't have no time to really be thinking about what day of the week I need to connect with this person, that person. The way it normally works, you know, um, someone could say, "Yo, I ain't, I ain't connect with you in a little hot minute," and I I got a window of opportunity to to really build with you. How you looking for the schedule? We could plan something because the thing is. When we're not dealing with social distancing and all this, when I go out somewhere with my wife, whoever it may be, I, I'm out the country with them. I, you know, we we experiencing the world. We 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 kicking our feet in Puerto Rico, and the the, the waters is changing colors from the stimulus of the fish. You know what I'm saying? So that. that's the vibe we on. You know, so uh, when by the time I come back, trust me, people like yo, you you can have them. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. I'm happy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, other than that. Also, that's why business is so very important. If the women don't run their own businesses, the time might be too idle, especially if they don't have children. That's you fact. feel me? Mm -hmm. So they got to have businesses to run. Like, I have businesses that I got to run. So be, I be busy because I'm conducting my business. I'm handling several different things. I have to do interviews. You know, I, I, I got this Netflix thing going down. Uh, I'm working on starting. Congratulations. Wednesday. Okay. You know, I got a documentary on health that I'm working on starting Wednesday. And um, it's going to be dope. And the, these guys are flying into town starting uh, Tuesday night. And we're shooting in the middle of all this chaos, right? And so that's that's a project. And, of course, my wives are involved with it. But it's, it's, that one's really featured around me. And one of my yeah. wives is, a, is an accountant, uh, Precious Metals Refinery Accountant. And then another one is a model. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of different things going on. It's a lot of moving parts. So because it's moving parts, and then I'm a celebrity mentor. So I'm helping people with their finance. I'm helping them with their health. So everyone's busy. And because we're very ambitious and driven, and we love the situation that's put us in, especially for the women that bear my children particularly, you know, I can say for sure that their life is way different. Their, their children's lives are playing out way better than their lives as children, and which was the main goal, you know, for the women that wanted children earlier, you know, because my wife that's modeling, of course, she's like, you know, we a whole type. I ain't tripping because I can make that baby with one of the other wives. So, right. you know, do your thing. But if she was the only wife, listen, my nigga, we might have to really have a conversation. <laughs> and you have to talk real, listen, my nigga. Okay. Yeah, real talk. I'm done. But, you know, I mean, that's, and that, that would be more, one of my more hood wives, because I, I, that's how she like talking. She like talking crazy. <laughs> so she got me talking crazy like that. And I like, it, you know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's, it's diversity. Diversifies the portfolio. So right. what what happens is, if everybody is really focusing on being the best version of themselves and being a master of their own destiny on mm -hmm. this plane of existence, then you're not consumed by the thought of who's with who. In fact, you'll be more likely to say, babe, I'm sorry. Um, I know I've been tied, but I'm going to get back to you. So I get more of those, whether people want to believe it or not, because I can still read the words going as I'm talking, <laughs> right? I can see the images, but I get more of, yo, polite, I'm I'm going I'm to really get up with you. I'm going to get in tune with you. Sometimes I'm sitting here, I got my free time, and all my wives is doing their damn thing. And I'm like, and no one got time for me. I'm like, shit, <laughs> yo, how the fuck I want up in this? Right. Like, them five. I'm putting in a petition. <laughs> you know what but I'm that saying? should but, make you feel so <laughs> proud. That's so cool. So, yeah, so basically what I'm saying is, is the women don't necessarily need a man's attention though they honor it and respect it. Right. Feel me? So it's not that I mean it's not like they in contention with a male. It's they found out other things about themselves that are just as valuable. So they don't have to preoccupy your thinking with let me get his attention, let me get his love, let me get his praise, let me get his validation. No, they not on that, that type of time. They know I appreciate them and love them, but they found out about other aspects of their potential that has them intrigued and invested in themselves. So it's not a big thing. When we're with each other, it is love and it's passion. It's, it's extreme. It's intense. But guess what? When we're not, that same energy is divested into other opportunities that can be gained on planet Earth for themselves individually. Mm-hmm.
So I hope so you there's a standard of a, the type of woman that you're going after. So like they definitely have to be ambitious or like want to start something because I mean, if not, Me, I'll tell you I, this. I hate to say it, I'm listening. you know what I'm saying? Like if they just have like that worker mentality and they're just in a schedule, then they have way more free time to worry about shit that they shouldn't be worrying about. That's what I'm real, getting. Real talk. They can't be having an idle time because that's, that's, that's where the chaos comes in. Cause you sit in there making up stuff in your head about things that's going on that is not happening. Mm -hmm. And I can't blame you because if I have nothing to do with myself, I probably be making up ideas too about what people are doing, but I'm too right. busy doing what I'm doing. And everybody knows, like, I, I know I post my stuff on the gram and do what I do, but yo, if I go to the club and you, if, if you seen me in a pic with, with a sister and you ain't never seen me well before, mm -hmm. nine and a half times out of 10, my wife is with me somewhere. She just ain't, Posing for that pick, she's right. she probably did, you know take your pick, do your thing. Sometimes she's there with all of them, you know what I'm saying. So even when when I go wherever I go around the world, whoever I'm with, I'm normally with one of my wives in the process of me doing it. That's just how that's how I be moving. It's just it's just what it is. So almost any I would say anybody that knows me can't really attest that they see me somewhere w without a woman, especially. One of them being my wives. Can't nobody really say something like that. They can't. You know, people that rock with me or, you know, what, on a few occasions, maybe I just pull up on Floyd and I'll be hanging out with Mayweather. But even on those occasions, I'll be with a woman almost like nine and three quarters out of ten. Very rare occasions, you know, unless I'm, I'm just pulling up and say, yo, I'm in town, King. What's up? Peace. But I'm right. about to run over there. You know, that might be the vibe. You know, or, or like Meta World Peace, that's my man. You know, and it, and even that, that's family too. So I don't, you know, it's very rare. You feel me? But the thing is this, love is law, family is business. And when it comes to the type of women that I'm interested in, I got to be able to build. You know, I, I, I want to I hear you tell me about, I, wanna, I, want, I want you involved in some kind of thing that you be thinking about that I don't be thinking about too much. And I just want to sit here and just hear you go. I just want to see what you're talking about. Like, right. I, I love to listen as much as I love to build. I know I talk a lot. That's that's just me. Thank goodness some people love to listen. But <laughs> I only reason I talk a lot because I retain so much. So I need somebody to put something in there. So tell, tell me something I ain't never heard. Let me listen to you. Let me hear right. you vibe. And me, I wouldn't care if you're talking about your emotions and, yo, I just feel like this. And that, I love to hear it. You know, if you're doing your type of card thing, okay, shit, I don't fuck with that. Everything's going to be new to me when you talk that. I'm like, I'm listening. Let me see. Make the connections. Connect that with this, that, and the third. Because my mind be like that. I'm probably ADD for all I know. I, I'm all over the place the way I think. So I like it all over the place. Start your conversation off with cars. Work your way over there to furniture. Take me over there to you wanting to travel. And, and, and then start breaking down little intricacies of, about clothing. And then talk about soup. I don't mind. I want to be all over the damn place all at once, at, all at the same time. I'm, I'm with it. I want all the smoke with conversation. And uh, I want to talk about numbers. I want to talk about stars. I want to talk about metaphysics. I want to talk about life. I want to talk about atoms. And I want to go back and forth. I want you to build, and I take it in, because I'm sapiosexual first. So I'm going to connect with you on a mental level first before I connect with you on any other level. You feel me? That's, that's the thing that makes me attractive. And I'm like, okay, I can keep I can I can keep a conversation with her. She can keep a conversation with me. We on that type of time, and she and she she's into what I'm talking about. No matter what it is, I'm probably talking about because she just loves knowledge. Mm -hmm. Man, it's gonna, it's gonna be a match made in heaven. Because if if we can't keep up with the information, I I do want a woman with a beautiful body. To preference, she had. I heard that you keep saying. Or, that. or hips. <laughs> I need to, I need to have a beautiful body. I'm not even play games. Need to have a beautiful face too. Got to be a company. We we could take an L on the breast if need be, but I need I need a I need the ass and need the hips. And it, and people don't understand ass. Ass don't, ass don't have to be all that fat. It mm -hmm. can be it can be uh the glutes from her exercise and so much the curves and her, the firmness in her legs. So it people don't understand. It don't have to be humongous ass or or someone put something in it or got injections, it don't got to be that. It could be like you just taking care of your body and the way you take care of yourself makes me in love with you because I can tell you in love with you because of what you have done for yourself. You, you feel what I'm saying? But yeah, I will, I will take the titties, though. It's a great concession. I will take that as well. But those things are not prerequisite. What's prerequisite is that we up here. 
Then all the other stuff can come. If we ain't up here, that shit's going to be hell. And, I, you know, I, what, sexually attracted to someone I can't talk to? That sound like child support or something. I don't want to be involved with that. <laughs> That's where the chaos. That's how I feel about that situation. I feel like I'm going to wind up on child support. <laughs> you know what I'm so I don't want to be on, on that type of time with no, no sister. I can't just be with a woman just because I'm physically attracted to her. That sounds like breeding grounds for chaos. You know, and at that time, I would have to let my emotions subside because it's not healthy to make decisions based on someone looks good. There's plain people look good. Let me find the ones that look good that I feel we could connect on a mental level. Why well, I got to go for the first one that I feel look good that's not on a mental level. Like, I'm not good enough to just hold out and meet with someone that we can build each other up instead of it being a handicap. And then I start being annoyed with you because, yeah, after I beat it up a couple times, I'm going to wind up looking at you like, man. You know, I, I don't want to think negative about a person, right. you know, but what's going to happen if you don't feel like a person is, is in alignment with you spiritually or psycho spiritually, you're going to wind up having a resentment for them later on in life. Yeah. And you're going to attempt to make it work over and over. And all that's going to happen is one day it's going to boil up to a lot of hostility and it's going to be an explosion. And you're going to be saying sorry for all the things you said. And you're going to feel like less of a person for doing that to somebody, being with somebody you don't really want to be with. I don't want to be part of that, and I don't want to waste people's time. I hate to spend some time with somebody. I don't know. Last time I had a breakup. I didn't really be breaking up with people in my world. You know, but um, I, would, I don't want to waste people's time. And, and yeah. even if you separate, uh, we can appreciate the value we added on to each other if, if it was really real. But what I don't want to do is leave a situation and be like, goodness, it's almost like I got nothing out of the situation, neither her or me. You talk to people these days when they separate. First of all, we didn't learn how to get together, so we definitely don't know how to separate. You feel me? So it's so negative when we separate. It's almost like, damn, well, there was nothing that, ha that has been gained. All we learned is what type of people we never want to be with again. Is that what we're walking with? So when I look on Instagram and I see these brothers and, and, and mostly sisters, sisters is good for this one. You know, brothers have a culture of lying and sisters have a culture of saying how they feel about someone of recent on their posts. <laughs> so I be seeing all these negative hints about don't talk to me unless this or niggas think that, that, and the third. And I, and I feel bad. Because I'm like, I see so much negative comments and, and anger and anxiety mm -hmm. and distress in people's posts more than I see. I love my significant other. Oh, hey, look at, look at the king right here. Like, I don't see that. I see a whole bunch of angry posts from sisters. That's a lot of trauma and, bonding. And that's that's the wounded wound. <laughs> you feel me? Mm -hmm. and, and it hurts. It hurts to see that. Because I'm waiting for the day in this era of social media where when I flick through the pictures, I see people happy with their significant other or saying things that sound like they're hinting towards the people that they love and they like. I just don't see it enough. That takes so, people to do their own shadow work, though. Because people will avoid dealing with themselves to get in a relationship and then just fuck that person up and fuck themselves up even more. Um I need to ask this question. So how do you differentiate pimping from polygamy? Because I got asked that. And it's not a problem. I had my answer, but I want to hear what you. I love that answer. question. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes people say I'm pimping when they see the relationship. And I understand, even though it's offensive and very disrespectful, I always let people know. But I also tell them I do understand because that's your only reference because you, you don't know enough about your culture mm -hmm. to say I can weigh the options amongst what I'm looking at. So pimping is a perversion of what you see in the form of polygyny. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we're not taking into consideration as a pimp. You're not worrying about people's emotions as a pimp. Your goal is to see if that woman doesn't have to be an economic slave See, in my world, in polygyny, my greatest goal, my highest honor is to see to it that the women can provide for themselves at the highest level, void of me, so I know when they choose to stay, it's because they chose to, not because they're an economic slave. Pimping is the complete opposite of that. This is going to close out in 10 seconds. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> wow. We'll Damn, pick it I didn't back even realize it was that long. 
Man, it was great. We got to do part two. I'm going to give you a call uh, once 